Our cabin section is finally done. I need to extend the tow bar a few inches, and I had to reassemble everything temporarily to take some measurements. This is the first time I've seen the trailer with the bike, and the size is pretty manageable, considering there's a kitchen and TV and all. It's not quite as long as the bike, and short enough that I'll be able to see over top of it pretty well. Obviously, there's been a lot of body work going on, but I'm assuming you all know how to sand and paint, so I won't bore you with any of that. If you'd like to know what materials I used for the finish, that's all in the previous video. I did add some happy little trees, but you could probably find a better teacher than me if you're interested in that. <laughs> Beat the devil out of it. That really is the fun part of this whole technique. I needed to come up with some kind of door handle that I could take apart to fold the camper. I was going to make some kind of knob, but I came across this online. It's a locking knob for a sport rack that fit the bill perfectly. When it's in the lock position, the knob just spins and you can't open the door from the outside. I'll use a vibration alarm system also in case I'm off hiking or biking somewhere. It works kind of like a car alarm. If I saw this thing parked at a campsite, I'd be pretty curious. So I thought it would be a good idea to at least have some level of security. I rigged up an awning with some tent poles and a small tarp. It sets up super easy and the whole rig only weighs 8 ounces. I can use the same tarp to cover the window in case I run into bad weather while I'm riding. Honestly, in that scenario, I'd probably pull over and climb inside, but it's there if I need it. It was important to figure out where all these anchor points would have to be so I could glue in small blocks of wood first. I can't just put a screw in wherever I want later, they'll pull right out of the styrofoam. I made some anchor points for the 100 watt solar panel too. I don't know if I'll ever need to charge stuff while I'm riding, but I wanted to have that option. I'll be parking the camper in the shade wherever possible, so I'll bring a long cable and put the panel in direct sunlight. It folds up flat and I can stow it inside when it's not in use. I put a clip in the ceiling for an overhead light. It has a dimmer and a motion sensor function if I want. I'm using a rechargeable headlamp. They come in a two pack so I can have one on my head and one in the camper and switch them out to charge up as I need to. Our sliding window works great and the folding table stows away nice and neat. I'll need to make some screens for the windows and door at some point, but that can wait for now. I made a gasket for the door by connecting some plastic drinking straws together and rolling them up in strips of Gorilla Tape. I know I'm not supposed to be using plastic straws. How dare you! But it was a super lightweight and cheap solution. And it goes back to what I was saying about simple repairs. I'm operating under the theory that for Americans, we're never more than five miles away from the nearest dollar store. It makes a nice seal and should be pretty affecting at keeping the mosquitoes outside. So that's our cabin section, minus a few details. But for now, we'll stay parked on the picnic table while I bring the bottom section indoors to finish the galley. There'll be a lot less body work to do on this section, but I need to get everything in place first. The sink is just a plastic container with the drain hose running out the wheel well. I'll use the tow bar to prop up the lid and hang our water bag and filter up here somewhere. I plan to line the entire inside of the galley with foil tape that will make it more fire resistant and cut down on the bodywork significantly. The stove is one of these types that runs on butane cylinders. I've stripped it down to the bare minimum and replaced most of the metal parts with cheap light foil pans. I can keep one below the stove to store my mess kit and it can double as a lid for grilling. Or there's plenty of burner space to cook some breakfast. I'll bring extra foil pans in case any get trashed. I also made sure I'll have access to the galley from inside the cabin, in case I want some water or a late night snack. 
The sink and stove will sit level, but I built the base with a little bit of a pitch like a drain board. Any rain or spills should run out of the back pretty harmlessly. I'll probably use some magnets to keep the stove in place. Down below is the drawer for our solar generator and food. I'll make sure to leave a drip edge so it stays dry inside. The cooler is a soft-sided thermal lunchbox with a metal lunchbox inside and as much insulation as I could stuff in between them. There's a thermoelectric Peltier cooling module in the lid that runs on USB power. I've already used the cooler a few times and it will keep an 8 hour ice pack frozen for about 48 hours. The only metal lunchbox I could find that would fit was Paw Patrol. But I did get a free puzzle inside. I picked the solar generator based on size, weight, and amount of amp hours. Pass through charging is really important too. and allows you to collect power as you're using it. I found a 12 volt charger that's compatible with my e-bike batteries. If I were to use the regular wall charger, I'd be taking my DC power, converting it to AC, and back to DC to charge my battery. That's really inefficient and kind of silly. If I use the 12 volt charger, I keep all my DC ducts in a row, and my battery will charge faster without wasting any of my precious solar energy on power conversion. So that's where we're at with the galley. I see a lot more sanding and painting in my immediate future, but I finally feel like we're on the downhill side of this thing. Spring is on the way, and I hope to be ready to take you for a test drive soon. Until then, stay happy campers, and we'll see you next time.